Hey guys, and welcome back to Mario and Luigi Superstar Saga. Now we're finally getting somewhere. We're in the presence of royalty right now. We're in Bean Bean Castle. Well, I, I guess it will be in the presence of royalty when we see someone else besides Prince Peasley. He's gone off God knows where, while we're here, like, pilfering the royal treasury. Well, okay, I, okay. Well, technically, Tom, Tom, we talked about discussing proper goals in front of people who would hear us. We're actually here. Because we heard that Cacletta was after something called the Bean Star, whatever that might be. So it's up to us to stop her before she does so. Wasn't this the wench, the bitch even, who stole Princess Peach's voice at the start of the game and then turned into Cacletta? Well, that's true, but that was a disguise. I mean, like, I'm pretty sure this is the real one. Ah, oh, it's gotta be. They won't pull the same trick twice. I just like looking at the animation of these sprites. Like I said before, like uh, the sprites have advanced in terms of like detail uh, as the games go on, but it never reaches quite this level of zaniness and expression, you know, as it's done in this game. And I believe it was mostly probably done because of the fact that it was on the Game Boy Advance. They had less hardware to work with. They had to really stand out, but it's helped so much in making Superstar Saga such a memorable game, in my opinion. Gives it a lot of personality. I think Dream Team Bros and Paper Jam use 3D models that are like drawn over, don't quote me on that, but it's super advanced like sprite work, or seems like advanced sprite work, and it looks fucking gorgeous. It is in fact the natural evolution of Superstar Saga, I'd go so far as to say. Yeah, I, I always thought the sprites in those games were kind of like, you know, what they did in, like, Donkey Kong Country. You know, they made, like, the 3D models, and then they kind of spriteized it, is what I'm trying to say. Uh -huh. Now, people often complain about the Mario Bros, you know, track record when it comes to actually doing what they're meant to be doing, which is plumbing. So along comes Mario Luigi Superstar Saga to set the record fucking straight, mate. He doesn't just go down pipes, no, he does actual plumbing, does Mario, and Luigi helps, I guess, by cheering him on. And this is our uh, first uh, recolor enemy, actually. You know, basically the same as the other flies, they're just a little bit faster, they do a little bit more damage, not too bad otherwise. It's time to advance it up, boys! Oh no! Oh no! Oh! It's beautiful. I'm only going to show you the slow version the first time. After that, you're on your own. Oh, that's good. Like, it feels really good to land these new attacks. The advanced bounce bros, as you see there, or saw there, grammar, what is it, who knows, can actually attack multiple people, but obviously if there's only one enemy left, it'll go after it two times. Basically, the gimmick of this area is, you know, as uh, Tom was explaining, the Mario Brothers have to do some actual plumbing, which has been 20 years since they did that, I guess? I don't know. When you find but... out the reason why the plumbing isn't a good idea, fixing it, that is, you will probably, like, either roll your eyes or laugh, or a combination of the two, because it is actually quite funny. But basically what we have to do is we have to, again, plug all the various uh, pipes, you know, in order to get the water flowing properly. Fortunately, that doesn't involve any actual complex plumbing work. It's just hitting shit back and other shit. So there you go. Well, that's Superstar Saga keeping things simple, you know, and again, it's to the game's credit that it just gets straight to the point with these dungeon puzzles. You know, I kind of want to take an opportunity to sort of bring up uh, something related to uh, Mario, you know, as a setting as a whole, uh -huh. um, you know, while we're going through and doing all this. Um, I guess I'll ask you a question in that, would you like to play games in the Mario universe that don't necessarily focus on Mario, is what I'm trying to say? We're talking about character spinoffs, sir. Yeah, something like that, something like that. Well, I think, like, the main one that comes to mind for me is obviously Luigi's Mansion 1 and 2, but you also have stuff like Wario World and Captain Toad Treasure Tracker, which is a spinoff of, like, you know... Whatever game he first appeared in, I, I, I don't have the answer right now, I'll have it on your desk by Monday morning, I swear. But to answer your question, yes, if done well. Really? A one? A one in speed? <laughs> Luigi's just trying! He's only trying! Um, what, what, what's your opinion with the Mario spin-offs? I know you're a big fan of, like, Wario World. Yeah, uh, well, I mean, I was playing some Wario World, I had some fun with that. Uh, like, you know, like you said, uh, if it's good, uh... You know, certainly, please make good games, please. But it's like, I feel it'd be a good opportunity to, again, be more experimental with Mario and kind of do stuff you don't normally do. And I'll be honest with you, 
The reason I brought up this question was because I kind of wanted to tell people about my experience playing Mario in like a tabletop RPG campaign setting. Okay, go for it. We're just basically doing some plumbing anyway. At one point, uh, I helped playtest do- I did at least one playtest session of a tabletop Mario RPG. You know, kind of like D&D &D in a way, but it was sort of a weird quasi-mix, like... It was like Paper Mario, but they sort of advanced a few things, and... What the thing was is that we didn't play like Mario or his friends, we actually played like different races. I was a Goomba who was a ninja. I was Goomusashi, that was his name. <laughs> nice. And he had like a wooden katana and he would go around handing out brochures for his ninja clan. Cause he was trying to get like more clients or things like that. And what happened is that he was there helping, I, I told you about this, uh, that he was at a construction site helping a foreman who was a bomb. Oh which you yeah, foreman bomb, yeah. Yeah, that guy, a Koopa Trooper who had a chain chomp as a weapon, he was actually on probation. And then later on, like a knight toad came into the picture. What had happened? during this playtest session was that Captain Syrup of all people actually attacked the village and sent like guys to fight us and really we were just kind of testing the combat system and things like that but I still had a lot of fun with that I loved doing the whole kind of like Gumusashi had like smoke bombs and he also had like a thing where he tried to be like Raiden you know he had like a ripper mode kind of a ripper quote unquote mode he mostly just said the line okay, you know okay, okay yeah we didn't beat her, but the foreman Babom threw himself at her when she was swimming away and just fucking exploded everywhere. It was great. We didn't get her, but I thought that was a great thing to mention. Uh, Captain uh, Syrup is a character from Warriors games, isn't she? Yeah, yeah. Uh, you know, she was basically trying to heist something. Like, we didn't go past that one session, but personally, I would have loved to do that. And I just kind of wanted to tell that story because, like, you know, a, a, a game doesn't have to be, like, serious or complex just have some fucking fun with it you know what i'm saying and i feel you know more stuff based in the mario universe that doesn't necessarily have to do with mario i think that would just be great just to kind of chill back and relax with you know what i'm saying you know it's funny you bring up like partner characters because i feel and i'm gonna try and keep this as far away from like a sick of star colors splash bashing session as i can i feel that's one area where paper mario might actually be superior to like Mario and Luigi in that in Paper Mario 64 and in Thousand Year Door and I guess if you want to like really stretch it you can like have the sprites in Super Paper Mario as well. You had all these like new unique characters who were like based, especially in the first two games, on previously like enemy centric characters from the Mario universe like Goombario and Goombella were obviously Goombas and then you had like Koops and Cooper uh, you even have had a boo in there with like Bow or Bow and whatever and it was just like you had lots of different unique characters that you really got to know throughout the course of the adventure whereas in the Mario and Luigi series it's mostly about the bros except for like in Paper Jump where you have Paper Mario bopping about with you now I can take both styles I love like the uh, brotherly camaraderie you have in the Mario Luigi series. I loved how you teamed up with different characters in Paper Mario. So really it's about picking your poison really. But the point I'm trying to make here is I feel where Paper Mario went wrong is maybe dialing back the story but maybe dialing back like the amount of creativity you know like partner wise because you could have a simple story if that was what was really the problem but streamlining it so much that you take away that aspect like another playable character really kind of dilutes the experience for me. I have to completely agree with you, actually, and I really do think that's where Paper Mario has gone wrong, in that it's dialed back all of the memorable characters, especially the partners who, even though I'm not as big of a Paper Mario fan, I really like that about the series, where you get all these cool people who happen to be monsters from the previous games, but they have their own personalities, they're good guys, they each have their own abilities, and they all come with you on this huge spanning quest, and you get to know them all. I really like that, in my opinion, and I really do think that if Paper Mario kind of wants to get back into the limelight, it should embrace that again. Like, what did we, what did they have in, like, uh, Sticker Star? Oh, what was her name? They had, like, one partner, and it was a fucking boring-looking sticker, and I think in the new game, 
it's like some bucket demon or something. I don't know, because I always think like, the, I, I look at the handle for the bucket. By the way, great design, by the way. A fucking bucket, really? It's, hey, it's a paint bucket, okay? The person you're thinking of from Sticker Star was Kirsty. But anyway, but I mean, like, I always think, like, the handle of the bucket is gonna split off into horns. I don't know, that's just me. Anything to make that character more interesting. But I have to agree, I much prefer the partners in, like, the earlier Paper Mario games, especially, like, the ones from Thousand Year Door. I think those are some of my favorites, actually. And I really got... Like, when we all worked together to defeat the Shadow Queen, that was to the fucking wire, man. Uh -huh. I just felt so much more of a kinship with them as a result. Okay, from one rant to another, here's why we should not have fixed the plumbing. Ah, uh, yeah, uh, <laughs> sort of a little problem with it. Yeah, yeah, we were essentially tricked because, on the one hand, we freed the real Lady Lima here and her attendants, but as you'll find out soon, that was also the castle's defense mechanism for keeping the Bean Star in place. Y yeah, it's always a good idea to have the broken plumbing be the thing that does that. Well, maybe they had like a separate, like, even deeper plumbing system, because otherwise, how's everyone going to the toilet in Bean Bean Castle? Do they go to the toilet at all, actually? The real question here is, do beans poop? <laughs> we must find this out right away. What? They pulled the same trick again. What? What a twist. Blah, 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 blah. Yeah, let's take the bean star and skedaddle. Where is headgear? Why would you take that off? That's like your gun. He doesn't need it anymore. We're beyond headgear. We're past headgear. We have belt gear now. Okay, so the voice was part of the legend, I guess. Always good to have an item that grants desires like any one of them protected by basic plumbing. Good idea. I think the closest uh, like comparison I can think of like, from Paper Mario's, the Crystal Stars, maybe. By the way, I love the Crystal Stars. I think they may be my favorite, like, my RPG MacGuffin. Yeah, they're not bad. Like, uh, uh that's, um... Thousand Year Door. Thousand Year Door. Okay. Because I was remembering, wait, no, he collected stars at some other point. Those were the star spirits. All right, just kind of running this back through my head. There's some goodies to get in here. Uh, there is a boss fight coming up, so make sure you're prepared. It's actually pretty easy to forget that you can just walk in here and get stuff. So I've done that a few times. Okay, we're just gonna leave this coward here. It's not random bean bean attendant superstar saga after all. That'd be a really interesting kind of weird game. I always love seeing like the fan art of them doing like different kinds of superstar saga uh, covers, but with different characters, like with Santa Papyrus from Undertale. Like that's always kind of neat. Okay, Mario's looking a bit peaked there, so bada bing, bada boom, we're good. I'm watching you, Tom, don't fuck this up! Okay, Angry Luigi's gotta stop, okay? I have feelings. <laughs> Meanwhile, Mario's like, no, Luigi, don't get angry <laughs> again! <laughs> Maybe that's just, like, the same shot, but taken from two different angles. That's probably what happens, like, that one time, Luigi just fucking snaps, man. Like, no, Mario, no, I'm my own brother, my own person, and I have feelings. The year Luigi was successful, at least emotionally, and don't make fun of me anymore. <laughs> yeah, I don't think it was successful financially, if I'm remembering correctly. I want a rocket chair. I'm gonna have to get one of those. Look, there's headgear. You can stop complaining there. I like headgear. It's a nice little thing for Fawful. He's so cute. No, you were complaining at the lack of headgear is what I was getting at. Oh... You did something evil to Queen Bee, didn't you? Of course not, Tom! <laughs> oh, Jesus, she's actually kind of buff. The roids, the roids! <sighs> you gotta try and have it kill us, aren't you? Yep, here we go. See ya, it's boss time. Yeah, I don't really think politics are gonna fly well with this lady. Let's do it. Man, this boss kicked my fucking ass as a child. 
Yeah, uh, if you don't know what you're doing, this boss can actually wreck you pretty hard. First thing you want to do is you want to hit the fist until they kind of droop. Because that's basically going to power a lot of her shockwaves. That's when the crown falls off, and she'll be open to actually taking damage. Although, when you take out the arms, it's important to know that the shockwaves will come faster, so you better be looking out for that wave. Uh, I would recommend being about mm, level 9 or 10 at this point. I think I was a little bit underleveled, but I can still take out an arm per turn with like a bros attack and just a standard jump. When she doesn't have her arms up, what she'll basically do is spit beans at you. Now, it's very easy to land on these as a counter, but you don't actually want to do that because that will create a beanie to fight by her side. So you want to time your jump just enough so you glide over it. You might think when you kill her and there's still beanies on the field, the beanies will die of sadness. No, they won't. So they've still got a chance to take you out, so be careful. Now, uh, again, as usual, brother's attacks are a pretty good way to take care of this. Uh, the advances will help you a little bit more, but I didn't really rely on them that much, like I said, you know, as a whole. So it's not really too bad. Really, the main danger of this boss is taking care of the shockwave business. Once you do that, she's not too bad. I think this is the first instance that really made me, like, take stock of, like, my items, like, syrups especially, because you're going to be able to, like, dealing damage fast here, because those arms will regenerate, so you want to get in the good licks while the game's good. You have to remember, with most RPGs, you're usually having, like, three or four party members, like, you can have one guy do heals while everybody else attacks. Here you only have the two people, you only have two actions per turn basically. So you really have to prioritize who's going to attack, who's going to heal, and what you're going to heal at which particular time. Another, like, difference between Paper Mario and Mario & Luigi is here, Mario and Luigi are both on the sidelines, whereas in the Paper Mario games, the partners are usually, like, behind Mario, and, like, attacks will hit Mario first, unless otherwise specified. In that case, it will go straight to the partner. Like in a thousand year door, they actually have HP. Whereas uh, in the first Paper Mario, they could only, they could take like a hit and they're like, oh, they're disabled for three turns, basically. Just gotta jump on it normally now. Well, sometimes you want to do that if you uh, feel you have enough space to not waste a brother's attack. Because again, you've got to have that space in order to recover your BP. Mm hmm. It's kind of disgusting, Queen. You should probably have better manners for, you know, visiting dignitaries. I just noticed her cue for this bean attack. She actually twitches the hand of which uh, brother she's going to throw it at. But the beans usually come in so slow, I just watch where the bean is going to head. And usually you can get out of trouble that way. I, uh, you may have noticed I have a problem, like, landing the last bit of the Splash Bros. advance move. That's mostly because Mario's off screen at the time. Yeah, uh, it can be a little difficult with that. Like, uh... In some of the later games, you know, when they go to, like, the two-screen ones, it's possible to kind of get lost in the gap between screens and not know what's coming up. Oh, jeez. Okay, we should be nearing the end of this now. Let's bring it on home. There we go. Ah, I thought she was blowing up there. I thought the roids had become too much. Well, her arms blew up with power and rage! Oh, yeah. Is there any talking points you want to bring up here, just while we wait for this boss to go down? Eventually, it does become a game of rinse and repeat, I've got to say, with these bosses. Um, I'm jealous of her mad gains, where I struggle to gain weight a little bit. Wow. Well, <laughs> what does it say about you? when, like, a fictional character from a fictional kingdom who isn't even human outdoes you in the games department. That's true, like, I, I never really thought that was a good argument, like, oh, this fictional character gets more dates than you. Yeah, because he was written that way. That doesn't mean anything. <laughs> if I was written that way, I could get mad puss as well, I just don't. It's not my fault, I was just drawn that way. Okay, this is gonna be the last round, so we're gonna dodge the beans and then counter. Counter like our lives depended on it. She's got like a Wilma Flintstone dress on, now that I think about it. I never noticed like the hand twitch before. I'm learning new things as we go through the game here, and that's what I love about doing Let's Plays, really. You really get to know games rather than just like passively enjoying them. Wow, that was the worst way to take out an enemy <laughs> ever. <laughs> that was bad, and now you gotta take care of the beanies, or it's just like, ah. Oh. Okay. This is kind of awkward, guys. The boss fight's over. 
No, I can do this. I'm but one BD. I will oh. make it. Oh, no. Nah, we got a ton of EXP for that. Luigi is happy. Oh, oh. Well, at least she's still breathing. I thought we nearly assassinated her, though. I don't know. She may about to be assassinated in a minute. Oh, the belly black worm. Is that what it's called? Uh, indigestion? Yeah, that's probably it. Well, the next part of our adventure is going to see the Mario Bros traveling to the nearby Chuckle Hook Woods to get some soda. It's a Mario Luigi game, guys. Just roll with me on this. And you can't buy it at the store. There's no zero calorie version of it, I'm afraid. Oh no, this stuff is high quality soda, mate. I want to drink, like, super fancy $100 soda. What does it taste like, I want? Well, it better taste the fucking solid platinum for it being a hundred dollars. Dude, solid platinum? Awesome name for a soda. <laughs> there you go, mate, there you go. It'd be like a nice, crisp, sprite-like sort of taste, but the bubbles are so distinct enough that they each bubble and die individually on your tongue, feeling fresh. <sighs> <laughs> I, I just love how she just ignores Luigi and he just kind of, all right. Yeah, I think that may be my favorite Luigi sprite in the game outside of battle. We're getting a lot of, like, entrance tokens here. Like, first we had Prince Peasley's Rose, now we've got the brooch. Yeah, I just hope they have space for them in their suitcase. Oh, don't worry, man. As long as the suitcase ain't talking, I can shove as much or as little in there as I like. Yeah, I don't like stuff well at all, I gotta say. <laughs> yeah, I don't think anyone does, really. Okay, well, I'm probably gonna get called out on that now. God damn it. Well, we can bitch more about him later. Uh -huh. You won't be able to stop us. Oh, we're just getting tons here. Yes, the badge system, here we go. Alright. Another thing shared with Paper Mario, the use of badges. Basically, you know, different effects as usual. In later games, they have like a weird combo effect you can get for like of a super move, street fighter kind of thing when you right, wear the right kinds. I never really cared for that, to be honest. Really? I didn't think it was that bad. Well, I don't know, it just adds like a, a layer of, I don't know, superfluousness. Just let me, like, tack on a badge and go to town, really. Does he have party pants? Oh, well. <laughs> when we find the right shop, any pants will be party pants, my friend. <laughs> like, party pants is all he has to wear to stop Bowser. So he walks in, and he's just wearing, like, polka dot overalls. All right, Bowser, let's get to it. Oh, Jesus, man, I'm a bit uncomfortable. Mario, don't give a shit. Woohoo! Yes, one badge means one. <laughs> that means Luigi doesn't actually get one, and they reference that. I love it. Uh, uh, oh, poor Luigi. <laughs> See, this is why I side with the guy, because he gets shot on constantly. I know, it's just, it's sad. You'll have to go buy one at the store, <laughs> you motherfucker. <laughs> oh, it's okay, Luigi. We here at HSC love you, my friend. Okay, guys, we'll see you next time. Bye-bye for now.